Hey YouTube, this is Next Charge here, and originally I didn't want to upload this because the panelist is Sonia, and neither did I want to do a panelist video. Give me a minute, adjusting the camera. Okay, uh, this is the empty jar deck, and well, yeah. After a lot of requests, a lot of people have been PMing me for the deck list. So I decided to just make the deck video since, well, yeah. Okay, so we start the deck with the monsters, which is actually very little because Empty Jar runs very least, a small amount of monsters. We have our main character, Morphing Jar, 3 Giant Red, 2 Needleworm as the alternate milling thing which will have the spells later on, and Sungun who will search out Morphing Jar. <coughs> you have to excuse me because, yeah, um, very tired. Um, and not Kai can use this actually. Um, wait, uh, yeah, Deep Diver, when this guy is striped by battle, I think, then s then add a monster from your deck to the top of the deck, I guess, yeah, I think that's the effect. This to get Morphing Jar. You have spells, which all decks have spells, unless you're running like Silk and Milk or Trap based deck. Wow, okay, so the spells are actually like 80% of the deck, or maybe less, I'm not sure, but yeah. Here are your three books, both are, well, all of them are in trees. Uh, basically, they're for Morphing Jar and Needleworm because, yeah, oh, but uh, Eclipse can actually serve as a sort of um, OTK prevention because you'll flip all monsters face down. And it's actually surprisingly nice against Light Swan because at the end phase, they'll have to, well, draw and mill, or whichever comes first. So, yeah. Just know that you have to have three of each of the books. Not sure if Book of Moon will. Never mind. Uh, we have, well, three Upstart Goblin as our sort of draw engine for the deck. Just in case you don't get what you want, you can always use this card. Uh, we have three Feather of the Phoenix, which ensures that we never get the deck to mill out and also to recycle the books. This card also recycles the books. It is the Magical Stone Excavation. The good thing about these cards is that they are normal spells, and the moment you set them, you can also activate them. You can also activate them on the same turn, and this is actually an advantage for uh, Empty Jar because, well, you get to manipulate your hand size a lot with Morphing Jar, and you have a lot of discard materials, provided that you don't search back the wrong thing or your opponent doesn't join to DD Crow, which could be which could be very troublesome. Uh, these two are the Shallow Grave, both players select one monster in their graveyard and spell summon them in defense mode. Uh, I can actually spell summon Morphing Jar if it's inside my grave for some reason, but mostly I'll just use it to spell summon Needleworm. And use the books to flip the Needleworm up, because this actually happens like mid or last game, because, wait no, mid or the late game, where I'm like, Lesser, my deck's lesser than the opponent by a few cards, and I can just use Needleworm to even out the deck a bit. This is two Magical Mallet. Um, people run, people can actually run three, but I prefer two because, yeah, it sort of replenishes your hand just in case you start with a bad hand and stuff. Two hand destruction. Um, actually, you can also uh, discard Morphing Jar in conjunction with. Wait, no. You can discard Morphing Jar, send it to Graveyard, and then use Shallow Grave to revive Morphing Jar. And we have... Yeah, I'm actually testing out these four cards. It's Cup of Face and Spell Reproduction. Uh, actually, you can only use one... You can also just use one Spell Reproduction. Spell Reproduction is discard two Spell Cards and one Spell Card from your Graveyard back to the hand. These two are kind of risky and... Yeah, but I'll leave it up to you and whatever you want to run. Uh, better leave the cards out for a few eyes to see. Um, got it so far? Okay. So now we have Source of Revealing Light, Giant Trinade, Card Destruction. Giant Trinade is actually really useful because it clears the opponent's spell and trap field, and just in case they have, well, um, Skill Drain, Face Down, Gladiator Beast Chariot, or and whatnot you'll be able to protect yourself in a sense and at the same time this card also gives back your hand cards just in case you use the um, morphing jar too much and you set the cards but then you have not later on you find yourself not enough uh, 
later on you won't have enough uh, cards to sorry give me a minute uh, to discard for cards like Feather of the Phoenix you can return them to your hand also a uh, useful thing is you can also return books that you set down if you know that Giant Trinity is in your deck and you want to abuse Morphing Jar until you get no, Giant Trinity you can just set down your books because books cannot be activated except for the Sun book of course because it's quick play you can activate a quick play spell on the third set so Giant Trinity helps in that sense uh, card destruction is mostly my finisher because at the end of the day after flipping the jar a lot your opponent will have like 5 cards in the hand well by right should be 5 cards unless they chain cards like um, DD Crow? Never mind. Uh, then yeah just set down your spell and trap cards and, uh, spell cards or trap cards until you have like 4 and then card destruction and you'll probably win if you time it correctly and last of all is the three threatening rocks, which sort of like my saltings. Uh, you can also use Waboku, but if I'm fighting against Gladiator Beast, that'll be a bit of a trouble because they have the fish. Uh, you can also actually right for fixes for that if there is if it's not up to your playstyle, you can always like use Desert Sunlight if you want the that trap card which flips face the monsters face up. Uh, another variant of Empty Jar is Cookie Jar, but I don't see that well. Because, well, just because, be, yeah, it focuses on giving your opponent the morphing jar, then using cards to flip it face up and doing the morphing jar stuns. Um, this one can be Heavy Storm, this one can be MST if you want, or these two can be Wabaku if you want. Actually, it's really interchangeable. Uh, yeah, give me a minute, I'm gonna set up a bird's eye view. Huh, lighting is pretty bad, but yeah, so this is uh, just a bird's eye view of the deck. I'll give you like some time to look through if you want to make the deck. Uh, too few empty jar players. Um, in the meantime, let me ramble. Okay, uh, so basically, right, your your side deck should, basic, should be against traps because sometimes they can do stuff like uh, skill drain uh, for gladiator pieces. Gladiator Beast Chariot and those things really screw you over. You can also run Prohibition if you want. Um, well, there's actually really nothing much to say. You can even run Imperial Iron Wall just in case you don't want DD Crow to screw you up later on. And yeah, it's actually a good thing if you start first, but if you get bare hand, then it really can't help you. Oh well, yeah, um, you can also replace this with a third Magical Mallet just in case you wanna. Uh, but just in case you find yourself having a lot more bad hands. So yeah, this is the deck. I won't put a deck list in the sidebar because other than that, you won't be watching the video if I simply just put a deck list in the sidebar. So yeah, uh, thanks guys. Take care.